One of these days, the Edmonton Oilers are going to hire a general manager to replace Peter Shirelli. You know, the rumor is right now that they're down to three candidates. One of them could be Mark Hunter, one of them could be Kelly McCrimmon, and one of them could be somebody else. Um, Derek, I guess we could be hearing this news as soon as any minute now to a month from now, since the draft is not until June 21st. Yeah, and what, what interests me is I, I wonder if it's the GMs trying to sell themselves to the Oilers or the Oilers trying to sell themselves to the GM. Because you look at the situation here, and let's take Kelly McCrimmon, for example, and Kelly McCrimmon is probably the number one contender when Seattle comes into the league because they saw what he did with Vegas, um, and they saw, and, and Seattle would say, well, could you do that with our team? So he's probably got that job lined up if, if he wants it. So the Oilers, if they want Kelly McCrimmon, I think they have to come in and sell the team to Kelly McCrimmon. Why should Kelly McCrimmon come and work in Edmonton when the team is up against the salary cap, it's got a bunch of bad contracts, it doesn't have much in the minors as, as far as prospects go. you got a scouting staff that's it's very nepotism. There's a lot of scouts that are related to other people. You have an owner that likes to hire his buddies and former ex-Oilers to, to important positions and, and, and how much of that do you have to contend with as a GM. So it's very interesting to see if a GM comes in here, does he, does he have the ability to say, you know what, I'm going to hire my own scouting staff, I'm going to hire my own uh, development staff, I'm going to hire all these people, I'm going to get rid of some of the people that, you, that Daryl Cates has brought on on board. And I think that's where the situation lies with the Edmonton Oilers. Are the Oilers selling the job to people or are people selling themselves to the Edmonton Oilers? And it's, it's a very interesting dynamic because you're coming in here to try and clean up an awful mess, and you're not going to get a lot of time to do it. They want it done now. They want to be in the playoffs by next year. You have the clock is ticking because you have the best player in the world on your team. But every year you waste a year of his contract is one year less than you have to be successful, and and you know he'll be out of here if you don't get this thing turned around as quickly as possible. So that is where it comes in the GM chair. So there's a lot of things in the air here right now, and it's just not just a matter of, oh, this guy's the best guy. We'll bring him in, and, and he'll accept the job with us well it sounds like a really big challenge and i don't know maybe there's somebody out there with a who's sadomasochistic and wants to have such a such a job i mean in the seattle expansion exam, uh, idea or the las vegas example we had from a couple of years ago like you said certainly sounds like it's easier but you know if somebody came in here and turned the orders around that person would be a god in this town and he would be, probably be quite well respected around the NHL for being able to do such a thing. Yeah, but he's got to be, have the tools to be able to do it. He's got to be allowed to do it. And he can't do it with one arm tied behind his back. And we saw this before when Steve Tambellini took over the job from Kevin Lowe. He kind of had one arm tied behind his back because he had someone upstairs saying, this guy has to be on our team. This guy has to be on our team. you got to pay this guy this much. And it, it's really tough for a GM to do his job when someone above him is telling him what players should be on his team and what contracts he should be signing. And I think that's one of the situations here. If, if you're going to bring in a guy, let him do what he thinks is, is best for the organization. And if that means firing a Paul Coffey or that means letting get rid of some other of the scouts, then you have to let him do that. It's a, it's, it is a daunting task. It's, it's, and I'm sure it would be a challenge for someone and someone would be like, ah, oh, I'm up for that challenge. But you can't do it with, with the hand tied behind his back. You have to let him do it, what he thinks is best for the organization. So perhaps it's really, up to, we'll see how Daryl Cates is. I mean, we don't hear from them very often. But if Daryl Cates really wants to see this team turn around and make the playoffs even as early as next year, he's going to have to give the new guy carte blanche. Well, he's going to have to. And I think the plan was always for Daryl Cates to, to do this with his his friends, the old 80s Oilers, the, that management group. Those guys, they wanted to say, we're going to win the Stanley Cup with these guys in management now. And it's not working. It hasn't worked. And so now he's going to have to take a different approach because now the fans have, are, are tired of this. They're, they're, it's, it's soon the fans are going to start they're, – they're voicing their displeasure on social media and whatever, but they're still buying tickets to go to the game. Soon they're going to stop buying tickets to go to the game. They're going to stop – buying the, the, the suites and renewals and things like that. And that's where the real talking is going to be. And that's where Daryl Cates is going to have to make a, a tough decision saying, do I want to win or do I want to win with certain people? And trying to win with certain people isn't working. So now you have to go to option B and saying, bring a guy in here that can, that can help us win.